Hi, I'm Jack Curtis Dubowski. I founded Style Music and Style Records in about 1988-1989 as part of the burgeoning DIY movement. The late 1980s were a difficult period for independent artists in Los Angeles. However, the import trade had encouraged the growth of independent distributors, such as Caroline Records, who distributed to style. The independent zine scene of the early 1990s further encouraged orders by direct mail. Many of these private press releases now appear on eBay and Discogs for hundreds of dollars. After seeing the style product there, I decided it would be a good idea to do an official authorized full quality digital re-release of this material. In some cases, original press CDs are now available, recently discovered in storage. Diza Pam Nights was released December 19, 1989, at the dawn of the 90s DIY zine culture explosion. Produced largely in isolation with few precedents save Tom Robinson and the Communards, reviewers compared the album to Tears for Fears, especially in its dark moods reminiscent of the hurting. Diza Pam Nights played shows in Los Angeles and San Francisco. I attended Berlin Independence Days in 1990, and I did a Dias of Hamnice interview on National East German radio station DT64. New old stock, original press copies of rare out-of-print Dias of Hamnice CDs were recently discovered in storage. The album is once again available via compact disc and digital download on iTunes, Amazon, and CD Baby, including full-resolution FLAC files, as well as available on streaming services such as Spotify. Dias Pam Nights is an important addition to collections of Los Angeles indie music, early queer core, and private press new wave. Helot Revolt, the world's greatest faggot heavy metal band, grabbed national attention in 1991 with a transgressive combination of music, sexuality, performance art, activism, and spectacular live shows. Music Press praised Helot Revolt's 1992 CD, In Your Face, Up Your Butt, with write-ups in RIP, BAM, Details, Billboard, as well as in many zines that promoted the counterculture of the period. Helot Revolt coincided with the homocore and queercore movements, but had its own unique polished metal sound. I was working in Los Angeles as a recording engineer with Kiss, Bob Ezrin, Megadeth, Max Norman, Warrant, Bo Hill, Tom Worman, Ron Gowdy, and many hair metal bands and producers of the day. This immersion influenced what would become the Helot Revolt CD, which musically was another studio project following Dizapam Knight and the Duchampians. Glenn Meadmore appears on the Helot Revolt CD on electric guitar. For live shows, I assembled a performance art troupe that played benefit shows for ACT UP, Queer Nation, City of Angels Hospice, and AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Helot Revolt shows were spectacular performance art extravaganzas with slide projectors, tape machines, costumes, dancers, and sing-alongs. In Los Angeles, Helot Revolt performed on bills with Tim Miller, Wayne Carr, Wendell Jones, Curtis York, Robbie Daniels, Molestation, Daniel McVeigh, and others. In San Francisco, I put together a live band that performed on bills with Pansy Division, Malibu Barbie, and others. To top the whole thing off, Alex McConey directed a rockumentary about the band, Helot Revolt, the world's greatest faggot heavy metal band, or they were out of Betty Davis, so I got this. The film screened in San Francisco and at film festivals as far as Honolulu and Melbourne, Australia. Glenn Meadmore is a legendary queer cowpunk and performance artist. Born in Winnipeg, Canada, Glenn came to Los Angeles and joined the burgeoning performance art and avant-garde community that revolved around the anti-club, Club Laja, and Jim Van Tyne's theoretical parties. Nearly 6'8 tall, the statuesque Meadmore towered above others and incorporated music, drag, and audience interaction into his act. He collaborated with Vaginal Cream Davis in the band Pedro, Muriel, and Esther. Glenn was arrested February 3, 1989 in Santa Barbara for obscenity related to a performance at the University of California, Santa Barbara during Gay Awareness Week. He was charged with indecent exposure, but this was reduced to disorderly conduct pertaining to lewd and dissolute behavior. Glenn, represented by public defender Rick Barron, was found not guilty. Glenn's first two LPs, Chicken and Biscuits and Squaw Bread, merged queerness, countrified hee-haw yodeling, and electronic grooves. Do Me from the first LP was a club hit remixed by Psychic TV and re-released on Wax Tracks Records. For his next album, Boned, Glenn assembled a live band and put forth a punkier sound, leading to his cowpunk reputation. The band included Dean Opseth on bass and Dave Kendrick on drums. Hot, Horny, and Born Again, the album I produced, set a new standard for Glenn's work, a refinement and culmination of his style. Hot, Horny, and Born Again was recorded in late 1992 in San Francisco and mixed in 93. Hot, Horny, and Born Again was originally licensed to Pavertidora in 98 and is now re-released digitally by DeStyle Music. I'm here with Glenn Meadmore. I produce his record. <laughs> One of the best things I've ever done in my whole life. Uh... 
I remember go-go dancing for Glam at your show at Woody's Hyperion. And how did you how did you ever hear about me? I don't even remember, but I was such a fan that I, I wanted to go-go dance. Really? For you. You'd heard my music? Yeah. Really? Well, I wouldn't go-go dance for just anybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> We told the assistant engineer to draw a glory hole, and he didn't know what one oh, was. Wow. <laughs> they did an outhouse. How <laughs> So these are the original two-inch tapes. So this is the order we recorded. Yeah. The suggestion that you made to put the lead guitar in the brakes of glory hole was perfect. It made the song to me. And it was like, I never would have thought of that without you. So... Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I just thought, you know, to do um, country music in the style of Carter Family, but with an overdriven guitar and full-on uh, power trio would be a good combination. That was what I, the vision was. There were some good tunes on there, and the fact that you know you embellished all these little things like that harmonies and the, and the organ and keyboards and, you know, just the sound of it. I was fascinated with John Wayne Gacy because he was a, a mass murderer and I wanted to find out what kind of mindset that type of person would have. I went to a mock bookstore and I found out that they had done exhibitions of Gacy paintings and I didn't know what they, that he painted and then they told me, yeah, he does commissions. So I said, well, I'm going to get him to do a painting of me. I like the image. For some reason, it looked like a cover of a record. Mark Mother's Bud just did a random drawing, impromptu drawing of me at a dinner one time. And I kept that image, and then I just thought it'd be, it'd be cute to put that in the, the record. 